Man, this is great to see everybody on a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday, Faith Lift Wednesday. Praise the Lord. It's always right to lift your faith. It's, it's always timely to build your faith uh, and to listen to the Word of God. So if you don't know what else to do, just listen to the Word of God. It'll bless you. All right, so we're glad you guys could join us. Thank you for coming in over the uh, Facebook Live. Let me have you go over to John chapter 16, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Big John. Big, good John. Big John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John chapter 16. And we'll look at something here that our Lord said. And uh, you probably want to pay attention to this because if Jesus said it, it's worth listening to. Amen, amen, amen. John chapter 16 and in the last verse of the chapter, verse 33, Jesus said, these things I have spoken unto you, <laughs> that in me you might have peace. In the world, you could have tribulation. No, the King James Version actually says you shall have tribulation. There's no maybe so about it. You're going to have tribulation, but, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Hmm. Man, that's a, that's a good place to say glory to God. Now, if we could uh, put, if, would you put that up in the New Living Translation? The New Living Translation renders verse 33 as follows. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. Woo! But take heart, because I have overcome the world. How about the Amplified Bible? Let's try that one. That's going to be a little bit more intense, I think. It amplifies things. Okay, yeah. Uh, let's see if we can do this here. Well, actually, I wrote it down, but I hope it coincides. I'm going to read from my notes because I'm having a... <laughs> uh, can you see that? No. How about that one? Is it better here? Better there. No, it's better here. Amplified says it this way. I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world you have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration. <laughs> but be of good cheer. Take courage. Be confident certain, undaunted, for I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. Oh man, is that the way, did you, was it the same in my notes as it was up there? Close, but no cigar, huh? Okay, well, I don't know. I just had amplified, I don't know what the difference is. Why do they do this? Why? Why can't they leave things alone in life? All right, let's read it again from the... So this is the Amplified Classic. See, I didn't have classic in my notes because I didn't know there was a difference until recently. So there's an Amplified Bible, and then there's an Amplified Classic. Mm, okay, one potato, two potatoes. Is it, is it half a dozen? Is it six of one, half a dozen of the other? It's the same darn thing. Leave it alone. All right, let's read that again. I have told you these things. I have told you these things. So that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world you have, in the world you have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration. Have you ever been frustrated? Absolutely. But be of good cheer, take courage, be confident, certain, undaunted, for I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. I love the fact that he says, I deprived it of power to harm you. Now, it's going to happen to people around you, and it may even try to happen to you, and sometimes it takes a while to get it off of you. But there it is. I've deprived it of power to harm you, and Jesus said, I conquered it for you. So you don't have to go around and try to conquer the world. He did it. So if you just take your place in Him and celebrate His victory and stay in your lane, stay in your place, then you can enjoy that victory that he secured for you. Um, 2 Timothy, uh, let me read this to you. No, you don't have to turn there. I just want to read it to you from 
Uh, you know what? I am going to turn to the King Jimmy. 2 Timothy 3.12. Let me do that. Because I have, I have something else written down in here. And sometimes my mind is in never, never land when I do things. And it's like, wait, did I write that down? Yep, you did. It's in your handwriting. And you initialed it, so you did it. You did it. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Let me show you that here. This is encouraging this morning, isn't it? <clears throat> Amen. You know, somehow or other, people get the idea that Christianity is this fluffy type of a thing. It's all goo ooey gooey and fluffy and easy and uh, peachy. And nothing could be farther from the truth. And if there's, if there's one thing that I hear a lot of through the years, it's, I don't understand why God isn't helping me. I don't understand why God isn't doing something. I've been serving him. I've been faithful. I prayed the prayer of faith. I'm current on my tithes. <laughs> I don't understand what's going on here. I made some confessions. And you know what? As soon as I decided I was going to do this thing, all hell broke loose in my life. Have you ever heard that? Hmm. Yeah, maybe you heard yourself say it too. As soon as I decided to do this for real, it was as if hell vomited out every ungodly evil thing. Now watch this in 2 Timothy 3, 12. Yea, hmm. and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. All that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Shall suffer. So you want to do this life of faith, do you? You want to live big for God and you don't care the cost, right? You said that, Lord, use me. I'll go with you wherever you want me to go. I'll serve you. I'll be faithful wherever you put me. It doesn't matter how menial or insignificant the task may seem. I will be faithful. Right where you put me, I'm going to be faithful. And I'm doing this this time, man. I'm tired of, I'm tired of vacillating. I'm tired of up and down, back and forth, in and out. I just want to stay the course. And, and, and the Lord, the Holy Spirit through Paul to Timothy said, yeah, well, good. You will suffer persecution. Now, the contemporary English version renders it this way. This is contemporary English version, C-E-V. In fact, anyone who belongs to Christ Jesus and wants to live right will have trouble from others. Yeah, I want to say that again. In fact, anyone who belongs to Christ Jesus and wants to live right will have trouble from others. Oh boy, doesn't that make you feel encouraged this, this evening? I, I tell you what, I, I wrote this down in my notes. We don't, and I wrote it in purple, by the way, so I would make sure to read it to you. We don't have to go looking for trouble because it's out looking for us. That is a notable quote right there. In fact, that's the way that you ought to put that in the margin of your Bible. We don't have to go out looking for trouble because trouble's looking for us. Trouble. Trouble. But remember that Jesus has deprived the world of power to harm you and me. Now, circumstances don't seem to know that, right? Symptoms certainly don't seem to know that. You ever notice that symptoms can just jump on you out of nowhere, especially when you're sleeping, minding your own cotton-picking business? You know, it's like the devil knows you're sleeping and you can't really object or oppose or, or stand up and say, no, you don't. So he sneaks up on you because he said, that's one way I can get them because they're sleeping. Bless their darling little hearts. As he comes in the house, he looks at you and says, boy, they're really cute laying there. I almost feel bad doing this to them. No, he don't feel bad doing it to you. He delights in jacking with us. He just hopes that you'll let it stay because it dishonors the one who bore it for you. He bore it, so you have to resist it. That means if you have to get up in the middle of the night and start resisting, that's what you do. I've done that a couple of times in my life. <laughs> More than a couple, I'll tell you. In fact, today was a day of resisting and overcoming some pain and issues that I'm dealing with. That's why I went out and shoveled not one but two driveways. I said, my, my wife's like, you, you're really going to go out there and do this, huh? I said, yep. 
and I ain't just going to stop with mine. I'm going down to my in-laws and I'm shoveling their driveway out. My mother-in-law needs her driveway shoveled out. Wow, that was a dumb thing to do. You see me standing here, don't you? I'm here. Sometimes I think what ends up happening is we talk ourselves out of things and then we talk ourselves into the wrong thing. Well, I'm hurt and I can't do this. No, the Bible says you can do all things. You can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. Do you believe that, number one? And number two, will you act like it's true? Now, I don't know about you, but something about the spirit of faith gets all over in you and you just double dog dare the devil. Cross this line, bud. You just want to, you just want to, you just want to act out in defiance against the enemy. And sometimes just getting up out of bed is an act of defiance. And this morning putting my clothes on was an act of defiance. But I did it. Like what was going on? I have no idea what was happening, man. Glory to God. You know, if, if we stop every time there's an ache or a pain or a body part not functioning right, if, if we stop and say, well, maybe I should just stay home and sleep. Let me sleep it off. Man, I never would have gotten out of bed for the rest of my life. <laughs> there's just something about the fight to this faith life. And we're called to fight the good fight of faith. And it helps for you and me to know that trouble's coming for you. You best get ready for it. Now that's not to scare you, but that's simply to prepare you to say, you know what? Jesus said, I deprived it of power to harm you. I conquered this thing for you. I conquered it for you. So no matter what it is you end up having to deal with or encounter or go through, you are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. And the scripture says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, because in and of myself, I don't have the strength to get through some of the things that I go through. Watch this. That's huge victory for me, lifting up that right arm right there. Huge. Huge. I don't have the strength to overcome everything I got to overcome in my life. There's times when I'm like, I, I can't do this, Lord. Well, that's... That's because you're trying to do it in and of yourself. Jump back into Christ. Stay in Christ it, will you? Stay in Christ it and you can do it. Instead of being in crisis, be in Christ it. You can't do this. Well, the, the Christ in me can. So what you want to say to that? Really, I'll tell you what, this life of faith is so exciting. It's so incredibly powerful. One of the things the Lord had to remind me, and I needed to hear this, I needed to hear this in a bad way. And he reminded me of this on Tuesday. Uh, I'm not home yet. <clears throat> I am en route. I'm en route, just like you are. We're in transit. We're heading home. We ain't there yet, but we're on our way. We are on our way to going home. We're en route. We're en route or en route. We're in transit. And so this life isn't it. We've been duped and we've been programmed to think that this life is it. It's not. We don't belong here. We are aliens. We are strangers. We are a peculiar people. And so we're just passing through. So when you're tempted to feel sorry for yourself and you're tempted to think, geez, this is that way or that's that way, whatever, whatever it is that you have to overcome and deal with, remind yourself, I'm not home yet. And I'm not going to feel comfortable. I'm not going to have a settled in feeling down here because I don't. Now, sometimes I would wonder about myself and say, dude, are you ever going to get content with life? And stop this not, well, wait a minute. I never said I wasn't content. I'm a contented man. But I don't feel like I'm home and cozy. Because I ain't. I, ain't you know, I mean, I don't even know how else to put that into any kind of expression for you. But don't feel so settled in and cozy that you get sloppy and lazy. Because trouble's looking for you. It's out there looking. That's not biblical. Oh, yes, it is. What did Jesus say? He said it's coming. It's going to happen. You don't have to wonder if it's coming. He said, in fact, anyone who belongs to Christ Jesus and wants to live right is going to have trouble from others. It's coming for you. It's looking for you. 
But I ain't worried about it, are you? Not one bit. I don't stop and consider it, not for a moment. But I recognize and I realize that when it comes, I don't have to start freaking out thinking, that's not fair. I'm living for you the best I can, Lord. You're supposed to protect me. And Jesus is saying, but I deprived it of power to harm you. I took, I took the burden of that stuff on me. And I, and I overcame it. Somebody put it this way. They said, you know, <laughs> Jesus whipped up on the, on the devil with two big sticks. You know, the cross. He just whipped up on the devil with two big sticks. I was like, well, I got that image in my head. Like, like a ninja with those nunchucks. And, <laughs> and Satan thought he had them, but if they realized what they were doing, they never would have crucified the Lord of glory. So, Jesus deprived the world of power to harm us. And every day, more trials, distresses, and frustrations are to be expected. But you don't, you don't let them stop you. You don't let them influence you. In fact, you, just, you, you don't even have to acknowledge it, really. But maybe make a mental note. So yeah, pastor said this was going to happen. Okay, just keep moving on. They, say, they said this would never happen. Oh, I don't even listen to that. All things are possible. All things are possible. Not probable, they're possible. Glory to God. In, in, uh, I guess we've got to go back to chapter 14 in John's Gospel there. Let me head back there. I should have kept a bookmark. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now why does it seem like we keep talking about difficulties, stress, and trials? Because we are at the end. We are at the end. We are at the end. That's why. This thing isn't just starting. In fact, people, they bless their darling little hearts and pee-picking, dumb pee-picking little heads. They, they say, well, if only we could have been alive in the Bible days and been with Jesus when he, really? No, you, you better be glad you're not there in that time. They had it much worse than we ever did. Much worse than we ever did. And if you study up on how some of the early uh, church died, you would do well to be much more grateful for what you have now. It's like, man, you know, when I said yes to Jesus, uh, that didn't mean I was losing my family, and that wasn't a death sentence. It was actually a good, happy time, I remember. You know, but for some of them, it meant something completely different than it does for us. But in John 14, it says this in verse 27. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Isn't that good? Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Not as the world gives. One thing about the world is that the world will exalt you one minute and then rip you to shreds the next. It'll turn on you quick-like. Before your heart beats, the next heartbeat comes, they hate you. Jesus said, not like the world gives, give I unto you. Watch this, this is really important. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Do you know that that's not God's responsibility? That's yours? Don't get mad at God if you're troubled and afraid, as if God didn't do something for you. Let not your heart be troubled. As I was coming across the bridge, minding my own little Italian business, that's exactly what I heard. It's up to you to let not your heart be troubled. It's up to you. Don't let your heart be troubled. You don't let your heart be afraid. That's your responsibility. You have to do that. You have, you have to actively guard Safeguard and protect your heart from the onslaught from this world. There's anxiety, there's worry, there's fear, there's panic, there's all kinds of things that are coming at you. There's people that you're going to have trouble with. And what's one way that you can keep your heart from being troubled and keeping your heart from being afraid? What's one way that you, you could do that? Simply by hearing the right thing. 
Because if faith comes by hearing, then fear comes by hearing. Doubt comes by hearing. Worry comes by hearing. So what is it that you're listening to? In fact, I remember thinking I had one, of, and I'm not going to tell you which one because it, it wouldn't be fair to do that, one of the Christian radio stations on, and the dude said, I'm going to talk to you about prayer. Prayer's hard, man. I went, click, goodbye. Hard? I didn't want to hear another word that came out of his mouth. Prayer ain't hard. What's so hard about praying? Nothing. There's nothing hard about praying. <sighs> the easiest thing in the world is to get into the Holy Ghost and pray in other tongues, man, and pray in the Spirit. Yeah. Easiest thing in the world to do. Just tap right in, in, in there, and you don't always know what to pray for as you ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for you according to the perfect will of God. It's the easiest thing to do. I don't have to know what to pray for. I just get off into the Holy Ghost and he does the praying. Right. Takes care of it all. Easiest thing in the world to do. You got to be careful who you listen to, what you listen to. And if somebody starts tracking wrong, shut the thing off. Don't listen to them. Because anxiety, fear, and worry, and depression comes the same way that faith comes. It comes by hearing. And when you hear the wrong thing, the wrong thing is going to be cultivated in you. And then you wonder why. Why I have anxiety. Why I got to take this medication. Why I can't sleep at night. Why I'm so troubled. Why I'm so fearful. Jesus said, do not let your heart be troubled. That's your job. Don't let it be afraid. That's up to you. Some Christians would do well to start switching the shows that they watch. Some of the stuff that comes on the TV, it's garbage, man. And garbage goes in, garbage comes out. And you wonder why you have an unfulfilled Christian life. You wonder why your experience is sappy and sad. You're watching garbage on the, on the TV. You're listening to garbage on the radio. And just because it's a song on the Christian radio station doesn't mean that it is a biblically accurate, correct song. There are so many songs that you listen to the words, you're like, man, this stuff is just filled with doubt, fear, and unbelief. I ain't listening to this. I'd rather, honestly, this is just me. You just do whatever you want with it. Dear, dear God, I'm going to go on record and say, sometimes I get so annoyed with the quality of songs on the Christian radio station, I put the secular radio station back on, and I jam out to Steely Dan or Journey. I, I, get, I feel better after doing that sometimes. That Christian, and now there's a lot of good music on the Christian radio station. Lots of good songs that, man, I could really get into that. It's like, oh, this is cool. But then all of a sudden one comes in there and you're like, this is so filled with poppycock. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing with, quote, unquote, Christian teaching or Christian education. You got to be careful. Just because somebody's quoting a Bible verse to you, doesn't mean it's, it's new covenant or biblically correct and accurate. Jesus said, I'm leaving my peace with you, my peace I'm giving to you. It's not like the world gives, because the world gives and then the world takes away. Jesus don't, don't do that. And Jesus said, do not let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The good news says, peace is what I leave with you. It is my own peace that I give you. How in the world could you be troubled when the Prince of Peace just said, I give you my peace? And there it is, right there for you. But you would rather listen to that other garbage. I don't care what they're reporting. I don't care what the news cast. I don't, I don't listen to that stuff. And it really bothers me that so many Christians are more in tune with current events and world things that are happening and they can't, even, they can't even stay victorious for two minutes at a time. Holman Christian Standard says, your heart must not be troubled or fearful. That's your job. That's not his job. He gave you everything you need to protect your heart and insulate it. I had something happen the other day, and something was said to me. <laughs> it's amazing how, you know, things work, but you can insulate yourself so well and the Holy Spirit will do such a good job that when somebody talks smack to you, I actually felt it, it I felt it, 
I felt it going here and try to get down here and something stopped it. <laughs> it never penetrated below into my heart. I went, uh-huh, that's right, that's right. That's the Holy Ghost saying, uh-uh, uh-uh. You spend time developing an intimate relationship with the Word and with the Holy Spirit, that smack won't get down in here. Because had it gone down here, I would have been troubled and fearful. And it never penetrated. And it, was, it just rolled right off my back. I said, that's right, like a duck, I'm going to shake it off. <laughs> you cannot enjoy this peace that Jesus is giving to you or has given to you if you will allow your heart to be troubled or fearful. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot be in faith and in fear at the same time. It's either one or the other. You have to choose sides. I refuse to get into fear. I refuse. Now, there are going to be opportunities for you to get into fear. That's why you want to have a network developed ahead of time, a network, a faith network. I call it a faith network, if you will. You hang around faith people. You hang around people who have the spirit of faith. You hang around people that are battle-hardened. They've been through some stuff in life, and they can say, I can promise you the word, you can depend on the word. I can promise you, you can stay strong, and you can get through this, because I did. I pro Listen, some of the, th and, and again, this is, this is not to make you think that I'm anything special, because I am not, but some of the life experiences that I've had were beyond difficult and had the potential to destroy me. In fact, there are, really, I should have been destroyed. But you have the right people, you listen to the right thing, you listen to the right words, you meditate on the right thing, and the Lord shows you, just, I mean, in the peace of God that passes all understanding, you'll never know that tangible peace until you find yourself in hell on earth. Not literal. But when you find yourself in the middle of, of hell on planet earth, and everything around you is hell, and you're like, I don't even know how I'm going to survive this, and the peace of God is there, and you feel like you have lost your mind because you are happy. You're like, something's wrong with me. <laughs> I must have done lost my mind. Crazy. That's the peace of God. It's real, it's tangible, and I can tell you that I would not have experienced it if I, if I was not in hell. So, what do you do about it? I don't know about you, but uh, I would spend as much time in the Word and, and with Jesus as I possibly could and say, Lord, I want to experience this. Now, when you, when, when you make that decision, understand this, everything around you is going to break loose to keep you from entering into that. To keep you from going there, you're going to become discouraged. You're going to become weary. You're going to get good and frustrated. You're going to get good and aggravated. Or, worst of all, you're going to get everything your heart ever wanted. You think that would be a good thing. It wouldn't. Some people are like, oh my God, if I could just hit the lottery. Oh my God is right. You can't handle it. How do you know that? See, here's the thing. You think a bunch of money all at once is going to solve everything? All it's going to do is make life worse for you in ways you could not imagine. So don't fall into that trap. The guy that gets everything and, and has no more mountains to climb, has nothing more to conquer, he's got no reason to listen to anybody or submit to anybody, he's got no reason to come back to church or read his Bible because now he's got everything. And I can do what I want to do because I don't need anybody else now. That's, that dude's in trouble. It could be a dudette too. But usually it's the dude's. They're the, they're, the, they're the ones that have the, the problem with pride and ego more than anything else. So, peace is real, just like the trouble is real. And, well, uh, Philippians, let's go to Philippians 4. Oh, yeah. Oh, we got time. You guys good? 
All right, now don't let me digress and leave you flapping and say, man, you're taking us all over the place. Stay on track, will you? Stay, because I have, a, I have a tendency to drift and wander. <laughs> Praise God, Philippians, Philippians. All right, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. So this is important. Why, Pastor? Well, because the times that we are living in are troubling, to say the least. Things that people think have always happened before. Well, this has happened before. No, the things that we are, experience, are experiencing have never happened before. Philippians 4.4, 4. rejoice in the Lord when you feel that circumstances are ideal. No. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation, verse 5, be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand, verse 6. Be anxious for nothing. Not careful, but be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about anything. Don't fret or have anxiety, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, how am I going to keep that peace? Well, I'm glad you asked, because verse 8 tells you. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. That's how you maintain the peace of God. That's how you keep your heart from being overcome by trouble and fear. You think on the right thing. You meditate upon the things that are true and honest and just and pure and lovely and a good report with virtue and praiseworthy. You can't just listen to and meditate uh, on any, you can't listen to and meditate just on any old thing. You just can't do it. You will not be able to keep the peace of God if you listen to just any old thing. What is it that goes over and over and over in you? It's, it should be verse 8. That's how you're going to maintain the peace of God. Be anxious for nothing. Be careful or have anxiety about nothing because all of that stuff will steal the peace of God from you. And that's why Paul said you've got to bring into captivity every thought and make it obedient to Christ because every thought that runs around in your head is not a godly thought. And, and, and something else too, people are oh, that's a good idea. Well, did you know that God never had a good idea in his life? God has perfect plans. God doesn't just sit up there and go, Light bulb, I just had a good idea. No, God has absolutely perfect plans. And if you will follow those plans, you will find the greatest level of, of contentment, of peace and joy that, I mean, it'll be the best thing ever if you will follow His plan. But if you keep listening to the different voices out there, it's going to keep you confused. God's not confused about what you are. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> but you think on the right thing. And you bring into captivity. That's your job. That's how you protect and guard your heart is you don't just let everything run around unchecked up here. You stop and you say, hold it. That, no, uh-uh, no, sorry. No, no, no. And, and I'm known, and, and you may have seen or witnessed this. I know people in town have. I'll speak right out loud. It, it looks like I'm talking to myself in the car. Um, I mean, you know, even before there was um, those things that you put in your ear or the thing on the, you talk on the, in the car, even before the advent of the cell phone, I've been known to do that. Thoughts will pop into my head, and if it's an ungodly thought, you might hear me say out loud, I doubt that. Oh, no, you don't. Like, is he, is he okay? Oh, yeah, that's just him taking captive every thought. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, how is it? that Jesus could be so adamant with us, if you will, telling us, hey, just be of good cheer. Take courage. Be confident. Be certain. How could Jesus just be so, you know, how is it that he could just say that to us in a world filled with trouble? How? How? Well, I'm glad you asked. First John, and we'll conclude here. We, we will conclude in First John chapter 4, and chapter 5. So 1 John is toward the end of the Bible. 1 John chapter 4 
Praise the Lord. There's so much trouble everywhere. Yeah, but why, why are you paying that much attention to it? That's why you're troubled. You know, and if I, I tell you what, I mean, even, even today, oh, you might, you're going to have to cancel church, Pastor. Pastor, you, you might need to cancel church because it's going to be bad out there. I don't know. It seemed like the roads were just really clean and no slickness, no slipperiness, no nothing. And I thought, wow, man. This is, I mean, if I had listened early on, we would have canceled church. For your safety, to protect the sheep, because you love them after all. You're a good pastor. You love your sheep. You want to protect them. Make them stay home so that they don't slip and slide all over the place coming to church. Boy, am I glad I didn't listen to that voice. I'm glad I listened to the voice of the head of the church who said, you don't need to cancel nothing. Thank you. 1 John chapter 4. How is it that Jesus could be so confident and really adamant? I like to say it that way because it's like, Lord, you do realize that I'm surrounded by trouble. You do realize that there's frustration and dread and worry and panic everywhere. Well, Jesus also said this to us in chapter 4. John chapter, uh, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because... Greater is he that is in you. Greater means what? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He doesn't say just as great. He says greater than. And God knows who's living in you. He is. And so he has the right to say, will you stop letting your heart be troubled? I am in you. And you and me make the majority. And if you can't do it, that's fine. I can, so be strong in me. Let me handle it through you. There's no impossibility with God. There is no such thing as an impossibility. There is no such thing as an incurable disease. There's no such thing as terminal. With God, all things are possible. So Jesus could be so confident and bold and adamant, if you will, because you and Jesus are living in there. And Jesus knows what he did. And so when you start to fret and worrying and allowing circumstances to bring you down, Jesus just might be in there saying, really? You think this is a big deal? You think this is a problem? And then you might say, didn't you hear what the doctor just said? And Jesus is going to be like, Really? Have you not read in my word what I did for you? Did you not know that I hung on that cross for you? Did you not know all that I accomplished for you? And you have to be honest and you have to say, Lord, I really don't believe it, Lord. In fact, I'll pray and if you heal me, fine. And if not, well, I guess I'm coming home to heaven. No, worse yet, they say this, well, I guess I'll get healed when I get to heaven. No, 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 no. You don't get healed when you get to heaven. For too many people, they got to heaven because their sick body died. So stop twisting it and just be real with it and say, doggone it, you're right, Lord. You're absolutely right. Now, I don't know everything, and maybe my faith isn't where it needs to be, but I'm not going to dishonor you, and I'm not going to lie about you and say, well, I prayed and God didn't answer my prayer. That's a lie. That's a bald-faced lie. Well, I asked him to heal me, and he didn't. That's a bald-faced lie. Because 2,000 years ago, if you'll go back in time and you'll, look at him, you'll see him on that cross, you'll be like, how can I accuse you of not doing something for me? This is horrendous. This is horrific. I can't even believe what I'm seeing here. Some of you need a revelation of that. I got one. I was in Indianapolis, Indiana when it happened. And I was at the foot of the cross. Never happened to me before, and it's never happened to me since. And the only response, the only thing my flesh could do was weep and wail. I couldn't even talk. I, I couldn't do nothing but weep and wail. That's how overwhelming it was. <laughs> and you think I'm going to say, God, why didn't you do something for me? I'll refer you back to the foot of the cross, young man. You remember what you saw? 
I can't describe it. It is impossible for me to describe what I was feeling. Can't do it. You have to get a revelation of it. Hey, Paul prayed that, didn't he? Spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. That's the only way to get a hold of it. And there are too many people in the pulpit now who have never had a revelation of what Jesus did for us. And how can they preach it then? How could they teach it? How can they convey the truth? They can't because they've never experienced it themselves. And so it comes out of the head. It doesn't come from the Word of God. It's not been revealed to them. And then they come up with clever things like, well, you know, beloved, you know, we can't, we can't question God's ways and, and I just trust that He has a plan and, and I just know that there's healing in heaven. No, there's not healing in heaven, dear God. <laughs> you get a new body, you won't need it. You want to get a new body, what are you going to need healing for? <laughs> Let's go on. <laughs> Greater is He that is in me than he that is in the world. We're, we're asking the question why Jesus could be so bold and confident when he tells you not to be troubled. Lord, I'm surrounded by trouble. Lord, there are many things that are perplexing and frustrating and I can't understand them and I don't know what to do about it. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Don't let your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Look at chapter 5. And if you haven't said OMG yet, then I'm hopeful after doing this, this is my last verse, 1 John chapter 5. Tell me when you get there. It's a long way from chapter 4. And in verse number 4. For whatsoever is born of God. My brother and sister, that's you. Have you been born again? Then you are born of God. So whatsoever is born of God, let's put it this way. Russ Hubbard overcomes the world. Paulinda Hubbard overcomes the world. Hmm. Chris Saunders overcomes the world because you've been born of God. In fact, if you've been born of God, put your name in here. You overcome the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Now, that may not excite you until I read it from two different translations. I don't know that we have these, but the 20th century renders it this way. All that have received the new life from God conquers the world. And this is the power that has conquered the world, our faith. But it's this translation that I'm going to read to you, and I abbreviated it, and I don't know what that abbreviation means, so I'm just going to tell you, <clears throat> P-H-I, I don't know, is it J.B. Phillips? I don't know. It may be J.B. Phillips, I guess. I don't know. But listen to it from this rendering. If this doesn't excite you, then you are unexcitable. <laughs> For God's heredity within us will always conquer the world outside. In fact, this faith of ours is the only way the world has been conquered. He said God's heredity within you. God's heredity. It's in your genes. Victory is in your genes. Winning is in your genes. Overcoming is in your genes. Your DNA is a DNA of victory. Your DNA is a, is a DNA of conquering. In other words, your DNA doesn't know how to lose because it never has and it never will. It's the stuff that God is made of. That's how Jesus could be so confident and so adamant and so bold with it and say, do not let your heart be troubled, but there's trouble all around me. Yeah, but the life of God in you doesn't know how to lose. The love of God and the power of God and the joy of God and the peace of God does not know how to bow its knee in surrender because it never has and it never will. Jesus didn't bow his knee and surrender. He willingly sacrificed and gave his life up so that he could do what he did for us as us. And so now, if you will just take a step back and say, wait a minute, this is what's trying to steal my peace? That's what's trying to take my peace away? This is what's trying to keep me down and discouraged today? 
this right here, this right here that couldn't be done? This, you mean this right here, this right here that couldn't be done? That, that's what had me discouraged today? The life of God in me is absolutely unrivaled. This DNA, this heredity within me doesn't know how to lose. You guys are unstoppable. And the only way that you can be stopped is when you quit. And when you lay it down and the Lord says, well, okay, I, I, I got to abide by your will. Whoa. What did I just say up here? I think you heard me. Your will is the strongest thing you got. God will honor your will. God. God will let you have your way if you set your heart and your will on it. He'll let you have it. So much so that if a human being decides that they want to reject Jesus Christ, the only hope, that God will honor that decision to spend eternity separated from him. Does it break his heart? Why do you think he's keeping the door open as long as he does? Giving everyone a chance. There's no, listen, nobody has an excuse. Nobody. Nobody has an excuse. Nobody can get into the next life and say, I didn't know. The Lord's going to say, liar, liar, pants are really on fire. <laughs> What's in us is, we, we sing a song about, you have no rival, you, but we don't act like it. I love how the church just sings these songs and then don't live like it. If that's not hypocrisy, then I don't know what is. Don't sing them. I ain't going to sing a song I don't believe. Glory to God. Don't let this stuff overwhelm you. So regardless of how bad it gets, and it is going to get worse. I know you just cheer up. It's going to get worse. But the Lord says, do not let your heart be troubled. God's heredity within us will always conquer the world outside, even during a global pandemic. This faith of ours is the only way the world has been conquered. So is your faith worth investing in? Is your faith worth building? Absolutely. Is it important for you to come to a church that builds faith for life? That's what we are. That's what we do. We are building faith for life. We're building faith for life because your faith is the only way this thing has been conquered. Let's not get clever and cute now, guys. Let's just do this. Let's just finish, thing. Let's finish it up strong. When the Son of Man comes back, is he going to find faith? Yep, right here he will, in this church. I mean, there's a big X on the roof of this thing right here. Right here, Lord, here's where faith is. And he knows that. And he's counting on us to help others. Just by doing what? By speaking the truth. Don't back up off of it.